Namaskar everybody and welcome to the Gita Satsang. So let us start with the Prarthana. By the Guru's grace and the will of Shri Krishna, we have all assembled for this Gita Satsang. May we have their guidance to be able to learn and adopt the things which will help us to grow spiritually. <coughs> Let us chant the shlokas. Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishna Yavasu Devaya Haraye Paramatmane Pranata Klesha Nashaya Govindaya Namo Namaha Namo Stute Vyasa Vishala Buddhi Ullara Vindaya Tapatra Netra Yenatvaya Bharata Taila Purnaha Prajva Lito Gnana Maya Pradipaha Rama Nujadaya Patram Gnana Vairagya Bhushanam Srimad Venkatanatharyam Vande Vedanta Deshikam Yonitya Machuta Padam Buja Yukma Rukma Vyamo Atastaditarani Trinayamene Asmad Gurur Bhagavato Syadayaika Sindho Rama Nujasya Charanam Sharanam Prapadye So with prayers at the lotus feet of the Acharyas, let us start our shloka for today. So today we are going to take up three shlokas which are connected with each other and which explain a set of, uh, you know, concepts in a cyclical manner. So since they are all interconnected, we will take them all together, the 14th, 15th and 16th shlokas. So we have seen how Krishna has been explaining to Arjuna the need for him to perform karma. So we, he has been specifically uh, talking about the need to do yajna. Yajna is any kind of an offering which is done to the Lord. Anything which is done in such a manner that it is prescribed by the Shastras and such actions which will not pull a person into the cycle of birth and death. So in the 14th shloka, <coughs> Krishna is continuing. He says, Annad bhavanti bhutani parjanyad anna sambhavaha Yagnyad bhavati parjanyo, yagnya karma samud bhavaha. In the 15th shloka, he says, Karma brahmod bhavam vidhi, brahma kshara samud bhavam, tasmat sarvagatam brahma, nityam yagnye pratishtitam. And in the 16th shloka, he says, Evam pravarti tam chakram, nanu vartayati yati hayaha. Agha Yurindriya Ramo Mogham Partha Sajivati. So let us take up the meaning of each of the shlokas one by one. In the 14th shloka, he is saying, he is explaining how the cycle starts. So he says, all be living beings, when he is saying Bhutani, then Bhutani means it refers to the living beings. So all living beings are existing, they subsist on food, on Anna. And how does the Anna come? The food comes because of the rains. When the rain is there, then the crops, the rice grows. And that is what we consume as food. Where do the rains come from? The rains come because as a result of sacrifice, as a result of yajna. And who is doing the yajna? It is the living beings who are performing their karmas, the prescribed duties. And that is what is considered as yajna. So in this shloka, he is saying that Living beings are existing because of Annam. Annam is coming because of rain. Rain comes because the deities are pleased when yajnas are performed. When human beings perform the prescribed duties. Now in the next uh, shloka he says that we said prescribed duties are performed. So how do we know which are the prescribed duties? They are described in the Vedas. So all whatever karmas a human being should be performing is all explained in the Shastras, in the Vedas. Now these Vedas are manifested by the Lord himself. Whatever is there in the Veda is exactly what the Lord has told and ordained that human being should follow. So they are like a manual for us. 
just like when we purchase any kind of an instrument or an equipment, we have a manual which comes along with that to explain how to operate that, what are the conditions it requires, what should be uh, done using that particular instrument. Similarly, when we get this human form and we are born as human beings, then what is it? What is the manual for us by which we should lead our life? Those are the Vedas. So these Vedas are telling about the duties which we should perform and they are told by the Lord himself. So when we do perform any yajna which is prescribed as per what the Vedas are telling, then the Lord himself is there in those yajnas that we perform. Then, then he, uh, Krishna is finally saying to Partha, O oh Partha, if there is anybody who does not accept this responsibility. So this is a cycle which is set up that you have to perform karma. Those karmas which you are performing are yajnas. And as a result of the yajnas, the deities are pleased. They give you uh, rain. Because of the rain, the anna comes. The anna is that thing which allows the human beings to survive and thrive. And out of gratitude for that, the human beings have to perform yajna. So this cyclical a relationship is there and everybody has their role to play. The devas have their role. The human beings have role, their role. But if the human being does not perform this yajna as it is told in the Vedas, then such a person is sinful. And such a person lives only for the delight, only for the pleasure of his senses. And this person's life is in vain. There is no use of this person having got a human life. Because he is not making use of it to do whatever has been told to him. So let us now go into the details of what exactly these shlokas are telling. So as we said, between the performance of yajna, that is the karma, and what is the outcome that is expected. You remember in this entire chapter, Krishna has been talking about karma yoga as a means for atma sakshatkara. So all living beings, all bhutas, they require anna for their survival. That is the food that is provided to them. So we said, where does the annam come? Only when there is rain will the food grow. And how does the rain come? When the deities are pleased. How will we please the deities? When human beings perform yajna. So here when we are saying yajna, that word covers all activities like performing worship of the deities, of the gods, deva puja, homa, havana, some particular kind of dana, some particular kind of ritualistic activity, all that is coming under this heading of yajna. Now, who can do all this? Only somebody who has a body. Again, even in that, it is not enough to only have a sharira, only to have a body. Even an animal has a body, but can it perform yajna? It cannot. A plant has a body, can it perform yajna? It cannot. All the inanimate objects, there also, there is a jivatma bound up within that body. There is a jivatma, there is a sharira. But can that kind of a sharira do a yajna? Not possible. Why? Because there is no jnana in those kind of uh, shariras. It's only when somebody has got a human sharira that along with that body, that atma is having a very highly developed level of jnana. So only a human being who has a body can perform yajna. And this body is existing. Why? Is it the body itself which is existing? No, it is because of the Atma. So when somebody is born as a human being and the Atma has taken this particular Sharira, it is the responsibility of that person to perform the Yajnas as they are prescribed by the Shastras. So if you look at this cycle which is here on the screen, that is what is it is indicated. We consume Annam, we do Karma, we perform Yajna, the deities are pleased with the yajna. They shower rain. Because of the rain, there is growth of, growth of annam. Because of this, the living being continues to live. And what is not shown here in the cycle is what is the role then of this human being? He has to attain atma sakshatkara. And in this chapter, Krishna is talking about performing karma as a means to atma sakshatkara. So we have to do all those actions which are prescribed in the Vedas because that is what pleases the Lord. Now, if there is somebody who is not doing this part, that we are only consuming the Annam which is given to us, but we are doing actions as per our own wish and will. We are not performing those Yajnas which are told in the Shastras. We are ignoring all that and we are only lost in our own pleasure. 
So such a person is called as Indriya Rama. Rama means to be, uh, you know, lost, to be engrossed. And Indriya means the senses. So somebody who is lost in sense pleasures is called Indriya Rama. And what actually should a human being be? He should be Atma Rama. He should be engrossed in Atma Darshana, in Atma Sakshatkara. Instead of that, if a person is lost in sense pleasure, then what is he doing? He is not doing what is prescribed by the Shastras. In fact, he is doing something which is prohibited by the Shastras. And such a person then is going on, going, is going on collecting Papa in his life. So because he is going on collecting Papa, he is going to go further and further away from Atma Sakshatkara. So if we want to get Atma Sakshatkara, if we want to attain Moksha through the path of Karma Yoga, it is very much possible provided we perform our actions as prescribed by the Shastras. So then they become Yajnas. So that the cyclical nature of this process is explained by Krishna here. That is why we said all these three shlokas are connected to each other. The 14th shloka talks about how food comes from rain and how rain comes when the deities are pleased. And then it talks about why we have to do these activities to please the deities because ultimately we are pleasing the Supreme Lord. Why? Whatever he has told in the Vedas, that is his um, desire. So we have to do actions which will fulfill those desires of the Lord. And that means we are going to be getting punya in our merit, in our credit. We are going to be getting closer to the Lord. If we don't do that, a human being who does not do such thing, who does not perform the actions as told in the Vedas, who is living only for sense pleasure, such a person is going to collect a lot of sin. And there is no point of him having got a human life at all. So these are the things that Krishna has now explained to Arjuna. From our point of view also, we um, the commentators explain about, now I may think that I am doing all activities as told in the Shastras. I am not doing anything which is prohibited by the Shastras, right? So I think that I am doing everything and I am trying as far as possible not to commit any papas. But without our knowledge, without uh, you know, being able to stop it, every grihastha, every person who is living a grihastha life, who is a householder, this person will accrue certain sins. They are called as the panchasuna. They are the five sins. And why these come? Because every day, without our knowledge, when we perform five of the everyday activities which are common in any house, at the time of those activities, we are responsible for killing many life forms, many organisms, many insects, things, uh, living entities which we cannot see with our eyes also. So what are these panchasuna? They are the sins which we get because of these five activities. What are those five activities? Pounding something with a stone, grinding with a stone, lighting the fire to cook at the time when I light the fire sweeping or cleaning the house, cleaning the floor, cleaning some other surface and washing pots and pans to clean them to prepare food. So these activities happen in every household, isn't it? If somebody is a sannyasi, then the sannyasi is prohibited from cooking his own food. The sannyasi has to beg arms and subsist on that only. He is not meant to cook and do any activities which involve these things. So for the sannyasi, it is fine. But the grihastha, he has to, in the grihastha's house, in the kitchen, all these activities definitely take place. And that gives certain papas to us. And these are things which we just cannot avoid by their very nature. Can I say I will not cook, I will not clean, I will just sit like that? That is not the role of a grihastha. That may be the role for a sannyasi, but that is not the role for the grihastha. A grihastha has to cook, he has to cook for offering to the Lord, he has to cook to eat for himself. He has to cook to offer to the sannyasis and other people in the samaja. So the grihastha can't help performing these activities. So what is it then that he must do? So whenever we know that there is papa which is going to come from some action, we are told some activity which is to be done as prayaschitta to overcome the effect of those papas. So that is why it is told the concept of pancha yagna, the five yagnas, the five actions that everybody, every grihastha is supposed to perform. 
in order to overcome the demerits which come from the Panchasuna. So what are this Pancha Yajna? The first one is called Brahma Yajna. So that involves contemplating on the nature of Brahman, contemplating on the nature of the Paramatma. And that will only come when we do study of the scriptures. So every day as a Grihastha, it is my duty to spend some amount of time in Adhyayana and Adhyapana. Adhyayana is studying the scriptures. If it is possible for me, if that is my uh, tendency and that is my, I have the ability for that, I should also explain to others about what is taught in the scriptures. So by performing Brahma Yajna, I take away, I neutralize the bad effects of some of these sins. The second Yajna which is told is called Deva Yajna. So that is when you do activities to please the gods. And that is what, that is the reason why we are told every day we must perform puja. Every day we must uh, clean the uh, place in our house where we have kept the deities. We have to offer worship to the deities. We have to offer food to them. And we must consume that as our prasada. So performing puja, that is a part of Deva Yajna. The third action which is told is Pitra Yajna. The offerings which are made to the departed souls. So for that, whatever is prescribed in the Shastra, whether it is the Tarpadam or it is uh, performing certain rites on the day of their our ancestors passing away or some ritual to be performed during Amavasya time, during certain periods of time as specified in the calendar. So the offerings we make to the ancestors who have departed from our family, that is called as Pitra Yajna. Then the fourth one is Manushya Yajna. We have to do our bit to help other human beings around us. So if there is somebody who has come to our house, we feed those people. If there is somebody around us in the society who is not having food to eat, we offer food to them. So that is a part of Manushya Yajna. And then the last category is what we call, the last um, Yajna is what is called as Bhuta Yajna. So some way of service to all living beings around you. And in the most common form it takes for us is that if there are animals around us, we provide some food to those animals. You may be knowing it is a common practice in some families that when they make, when they cook food before they consume it themselves, they will keep one small bite of that for the crow or for the birds and things like that. Or if there is a um, some animal around your house during the time of, on the day of Dwadashi, it is told that we must offer a bunch of this um, particular type of green leafy vegetable, which is called Ahati Kire in Tamil and it is called Agse Sopu in Kannada. So that has to be offered to the cow. Then regularly also, if you look at our lifestyles, the way it was long back in the past, people would eat on the plantain leaf. And it was always told that you must not fully empty that leaf. A little bit of food should be left back on that. And that should be put outside your house in a common space where the animals can come and eat whatever is left over there. So that is feeding the animals also around us is Bhuta Yajna. So as human beings, as grihasthas, when we are leaving, leading our life, we must perform these pancha yagna so that we can overcome the papa which comes from the panchasuna. Now we need to contemplate and see how much of this are we doing every day? Are we really performing all these yagnas every day? <clears throat> so whatever is possible for us to do, we must start with doing that much at least. Deva yagna, all of us, we may be performing puja every day possibly since we are attending this satsang or we are listening to this satsang then definitely we must be at that level where we are at least performing uh, deva puja uh, deva yajna pitra yajna we must if okay there is no role for ladies in this to do it themselves but we must make sure that the men in our family are um, you know what you say motivated we inspire them we make them understand the importance and those Tarpana and other uh, rituals are performed as prescribed in our Shastra. If it is that we, are, we have the right to do it ourselves, we must do it ourselves. If it is such that we have to make somebody else to do it on our behalf, we must make do that. right? Then Manushya Yajna, feeding other people around us. Somebody is needy, somebody is in need of help. Today our lifestyles have changed very greatly, isn't it? We don't have people who are uh, coming as guests to our house. Even in fact, if we go to our closest relatives 
houses also we often we give a call we confirm that they are available we confirm that it is okay for them to receive us and only then we go which is actually uh, against the very purpose of this you know this um, guests in uh, our indian language they are called atithi what is that meaning of that atithi tithi means a particular date atithi means somebody who comes on a wrong day or somebody who comes without a proper given date so the very nature of atithi is that the person has appeared suddenly right today our lifestyles may not be having that kind of a situation where somebody comes suddenly to uh, our house but at least to whatever extent possible if it is possible for us to give food to somebody else to feed someone else or as the lady of the house you are cooking then whoever else is available you are feeding them of course parts of your people of your family that you will not say that you are feeding them and in the manner of doing a yajna but if there is any opportunity which is available or if we can contribute in any kind of an event where there is anadana happening and things like that we must try and do that also feeding animals we can keep a little bit of food water for the birds around our house okay all of us may also feel that this is not possible often because we are living in the city there are no birds to come and eat but put out some food somewhere outside maybe if there is some chance a bird will come and peck at it or maybe there will be some ants or some other insects which will eat that to that extent we can try and fulfill this activity also so let us try to do this because as we said when we perform these yagnas whatever it may be now these we are saying that these pancha yagnas are done to overcome the sins which are coming through because of the pancha suna but beyond this also we have to do whatever it is possible for us to offer some prayers to the lord so to make our part because we know that what is prescribed in the shastras is glorification of the lord and when we do that the lord is happy so along with all these things we must try to spend as much time as possible in doing more and more chanting in remembering the lord more and more <laughs> and in doing all our actions they may be worldly actions they may be normal everyday routine activities where there is no chance that that activity will be a will be considered as a yagna but even when i am doing that if i pray to the lord and i ask for his help in helping me perform that action in a good way if i offer gratitude to the lord for having me for help me to perform that action if i do all with the bhava that the lord is doing it through me then it is possible for us to make even our normal routine actions into karma yoga so that is what we must make an attempt to do right so these are some of the things that we have discussed in today's uh, satsang so we saw three shlokas the 14 15 and 16 shlokas where the whole cycle is explained of how yagna is connected to atma darshana so let us pray that the lord will bless us to be ad to adopt all these things and to understand these things and practice them in our life we have come to the end of our topic for today so let us offer gratitude let us offer kritagnata at the lotus feet of shri krishna and guru who has inspired us to start and join this satsang and let us pray that their blessings and grace are always on us thank you everybody for attending and we will continue with our topic in the next satsang namaskar thank you